Matt Reif is in even more trouble than he already was before after Brooke and Tana exposed him on their recent podcast episode. And now things are looking a lot worse for him because this information that they're bringing to the table is just honestly so bad and I don't know what he could do at this point to really save face because he's in quite a tricky situation. And speaking of tricky situations, let's talk about today's sponsor who is Morgan & Morgan. If you're injured and don't know where to start with Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. They make hiring a lawyer super simple. I think a lot of people think that hiring a lawyer has to be this expensive and complicated and very stressful process, but not with Morgan & Morgan. I'm telling you guys, more than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. When you are in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you need to do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. Everything can be done right on your phone. You can submit your case details, sign contracts, upload documents, medical records, all from your cell phone. And you can even text your attorney and legal team throughout the duration of your case. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without having to leave your couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. So in the recent canceled episode, Brooke wanted to explain why she had been so defensive of Matt Rife recently, despite the fact that people have accused him of not respecting women. She explained that earlier this year, she was hanging out with Matt romantically, admitting that this was the guy they've been referring to as DC guy on their podcast since she had gone to DC with him while they were seeing each other. She basically says that despite the jokes that she's heard him make and things that he said on podcasts, she just told herself that this was his stage presence, it's not really him, I know him, I know the real him. She felt like he was always nice to her, which Tana disagreed with, saying that he lied to Brooke a lot and also got a girlfriend right after, even though he said he didn't have time for a relationship. But essentially, prior to new information she learned and ended up sharing with everyone in this podcast, this was why Brooke had been so defensive, especially in the last podcast episode. I was on here like I'm like I love Matt he he respects women like which is crazy <laughs> I was like I could because I really like I'm like I feel that I have always felt that way about him I really felt like he respected me like I did and women in general Brooke was ready to air him out though and explain what she found out that completely changed her mind about Matt and has her believing that he really doesn't respect women. Which after hearing about some other things, I can't believe it took her this long to finally see it because the other stuff that happened that had Tana pissed off was just so hurtful. But basically, Brooke recently got tagged in a TikTok where this girl posted all these photos that she had with Matt Reif and the caption was, tell your group chat I said hi. She also commented the timeline of things saying this was at the beginning of the year y'all chill if you don't know then you don't know which brooke then decided to message her because she was also seeing matt at the beginning of the year and said that not too long after he got a girlfriend so there wasn't any time for him to really see someone else in between unless there was some overlap and overlap there was a lot of it it turns out Matt had been seeing several other girls at the same time as Brooke, and they all slowly found out about each other and created a group chat to get a real timeline of when he was seeing all of them, and now Brooke was getting filled in. I DM her, and I'm I'm like, hey, like, just wondering, honestly, like, what was the timeline exactly? Just because, like, I'm, I'm curious. Because, I mean, his current girlfriend was not long after me either, so I'm like, it had to have been around the same time. Immediately, she puts me into a group chat. You never want to be in a group chat with beautiful, strange women, okay? When I tell you, Tana, you want to talk about women in STEM, we were, there were timelines, there were Venn diagrams, there was, we were comparing notes. For a man who doesn't have time, this man had the most oh, you're time. I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, like, oh my God, because I'm not kidding. For all of this time, I would see his billboard on Sunset and be like, <laughs> like I was literally like his biggest supporter. And I've I've been waving a Matt Rife apologist flag for like all this time, like thinking like, oh, he was so good to me. Like, what the? F and he never was. He got a girlfriend right after he lied a lot. It honestly only proceeds to get worse for a number of reasons because not only was he seeing multiple girls at the same time, but Brooke says that he was telling her that she couldn't be with anyone else, she couldn't hang out with her friends who were guys, and said all this stuff to her as he was literally with other people. My immediate reaction, just because I'm me and I'm stupid, 
I start gaslighting myself. I'm literally like, okay, well, you know what? Like maybe it wasn't as serious as I thought it was. Like maybe I just, maybe I thought it was like this huge serious thing and he didn't. Took only a couple scrolls, Tana, for me to get back to where he's telling me like, like just, I don't want you seeing, I, just, I don't want you, even, you to even look at another guy. I don't want anybody else touching you. I don't want you, he didn't want me hanging out with like my guy friends. Like it was so specific in that like he was like you're the only girl i want I, he, we're talking about when we're gonna move to dc and run away like i was not i don't think i was delusional and the part that i was like no way it gets worse to was that she said that when she went to go confront him about all of this she realized that her number was blocked just sent him a text and i was like how embarrassing is it that i'm literally currently getting dragged for defending you while also in a group chat with like seven other girlfriends you had like mm. what and he blocked my number. I was just gonna say, tell me the message is green and I'm blowing this house up. He blocked my number, as in, my number was blocked last week when I was waving a like Matt White Rife is like so nice and respectful flag. I publicly was defending him after he had already blocked my number. Like, how embarrassing. And what the are you blocking my number for, you loser? Honestly, in my opinion, I think he blocked everyone he was probably talking to when he got his girlfriend to avoid any of them trying to hit him up and text him or something and have her see it. But the fact that you have to block people is literally the most interesting part because it's like he didn't exactly want to tell them to their face like, hey, you don't hit me up. I actually have a girlfriend, but instead kind of leave it open. And maybe if they broke up, he could unblock them and be like, hey, what's up? It's just so ugh. And that's not even it, you guys. Tana and Brooke then talk about the fact that Matt going on the Stiff Socks podcast earlier this year was even worse than probably any of us thought it was. Basically, when he went on that podcast, he shamed women's privates and also said that his type of women were blonde and had fake boobs. And the podcast got deleted because he received so much backlash for talking about women in this way. But Brooke revealed that at the time he recorded this episode, they were seeing each other and she had just seen him the night before. And what he said on the show about what kind of women he liked was quite literally the opposite of her. Matt Reif went on the Stiff Socks podcast with our baby Trevor Wallace. And okay. I just want to say this is when I knew. I was still actively seeing him at the time. In fact, we'd gone to dinner the night before. He was telling me all about how he was going on a podcast. I don't know if you guys recall. Um, that was like the most. Oh. He's since had it wiped, <laughs> wiped from the internet. I wish I could wipe it from my memory. First offense was Trevor asking what his type was. His answer was blondes with fake Okay. He goes on to say that he um, is disgusted by Audi vagina. Girls who have Audi vagina because it looks like God left the tag on them. Now, I'm going to give you guys the canceled exclusive here, but I, Brooke Schofield, have an Audi vagina. Imagine me sitting there, my jaw on the floor. You was, guys thought that was disgusting. The, the, the public was like, oh my God, how horrible. Imagine how I felt. He literally just went on a podcast and was like, yeah, I'm repulsed by this bitch i just don't understand how one he could say these things but also the fact that he was saying them knowing that she was probably going to be watching i mean it's just proof that he doesn't respect women because what like how are you going to say all that truly it's awful and he's getting a ton of backlash now even more than before since all of this has been brought to light because obviously brooke has a ton of supporters and one thing that people started commenting about was the fact that matt did go on their canceled podcast back in june and completely acted like brooke was a total stranger to him and brooke and tana talked about the fact that they were even shocked by how he acted towards brooke when they filmed that episode all of you guys who bullied me for my behavior on the matt rife episode i had not seen him since he told me he would be at my house in an hour babe okay that was my first ever time ever coming face to face with him after like he literally was just like okay good night babe see you in a sec like of course i was like Osama i didn't even bin know Laden. i didn't know he was gonna come in and act like he didn't know me from adam i thought it was gonna be like oh like yeah we know each other like it was just such i a was so living after that episode i remember he left and i was shaking i was like nervous i just felt weird because i was like why are you pretending you don't know it was just the weirdest like feeling and i was like wait what like 
I don't know. Matt currently has a girlfriend and some think that she may have responded to seeing all that's come out about him when she posted this super full wine glass the other night on her Instagram story. Yikes for sure. And lastly, I will bring up the fact that Brooke said that Matt would literally make fun of her job because he doesn't like social media and she obviously is on social media as an influencer. But the fact that he would make fun of her is insane when he is literally famous from social media. You know what? He made me go <laughs> stupid fuck so stupid for my social media job as if it was like the most unserious job in the world like i get he did stuff before but he blew up on social media like he's a social media star whether he likes that or not people aren't like oh my god matt rife yeah that guy that's from like wild and out like no they're like that's the guy from tiktok and instagram and there's nothing wrong with that but clearly he's looking down upon that very thing that's gotten him a career and that's just sad because this exact attitude of i don't like what's got me famous i'm embarrassed by it i don't like my audience being all women this this attitude is not going to get him any farther if he keeps it up. And clearly, he better recognize that not respecting women has its consequences. But that's what's going on with Matt Rife. That is what Brooke and Tana had to say. I certainly want to know what you guys think about all of this because it is insane. But let me know your thoughts. I love you guys so much. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.